Hi, I'm Dixie, and a few months ago, I finished a late 1830s dress and fichu for a costume event, and I had planned to make a bonnet to go with that outfit, but I ran out of time. And now that Halloween is over and I don't have any more big project deadlines, I am finally getting around to making this bonnet. Now, I am no milliner, and it's been a long time since I've done a fully covered buckram frame style hat. Please do not think of this as a tutorial because you'll see why in a bit. I started by using the Black Snail Romantic Era bonnet pattern, but when I taped together the paper pieces, I thought, it's just too small. The 1830s were known for volume, big hats, big skirts, and especially big sleeves. But the late 1830s saw a transition from the over-the-top look from earlier in the decade to the more toned-down, austere fashions of the 1840s and bonnet shapes of this time were morphing. The crown slid down the head following the descent of the bun. Early 1830s buns were way up at the top of the head. The brim gets really long and wide and covers more of the face. But by the 1840s, the crown and the brim become one long piece. I wanted to go for a style like this, with a really big dramatic brim that covers the whole face from the side. And after more paper mock-ups than I'd like to count, I ended up with this shape. And this is how it compares to the black snail version. With a functional pattern, I started cutting out my buckram, which is a cotton fabric covered in a stiffening glue. I bought this at my local Joanne fabric store. For more strength, you add a thin wire to the edge and cover it with bias strips, which I did by machine. After that, I sewed the pieces together and I decided that my buckram was too floppy. In my defense, I've only made one other hat that was a 100% wired buckram form like this before, and that was ages ago, and I used a kit that included really nice quality buckram, which this is not. So I ordered new buckram online and waited for it to arrive. I just got my new buckram in from Judith M. Millinery online. And this is the new stuff, and the quality difference between this and the stuff I got at Joann's is incredible. <laughs> the fibers are so much bigger on this one, and it's much stiffer, and this just feels like paper compared to this. Lesson learned. Don't buy buckram at a big box craft store. I'll spare you the footage of me remaking the entire form again and just show you the finished product. My original is obviously very floppy. The new one on the right holds its shape much better. Now I can move on to the mulling or covering the form in a layer of fabric to soften the lines of the frame and hide the buckram. I'm using cotton flannel. Most of the extant bonnets I've seen from this time period have an open crown hole, meaning there is no solid layer of buckram covering the tip. Instead, it's just fabric stretched over the opening. So I wanted to try that on this bonnet. It was certainly more difficult to work with than having a solid top. So fun fact, several years ago when I made my late 1840s bonnet, I had finished the buckram frame and then set the project aside for months, which is never a good idea. So when I picked it back up again, I went straight ahead into covering it with my silk. And it wasn't until I was almost finished hand sewing this whole freaking hat that I realized I forgot the mulling. And at that point I was like, no, I've gone too far. I'm just gonna finish this thing. So I did. And it looks okay, like it's fine, uh, but I cannot believe I completely forgot to do that part. Well, I have almost completed covering the bonnet with the flannel and I've decided I don't think the wire is thick enough. The buckram itself is a lot better, but the wire that I use is just this 22 gauge floral wire which is not as strong as I would like. I've used it before and it did fine, but I think because this crown is so large, it needs something else. So I bought some of this. So this is 18 gauge, and I'm gonna see if I can make it work. 
At first, I did attempt to just slide the new wire in under the flannel, but now I had to take off the flannel entirely and do it all again. <sighs> but eventually it was done and we get to the fun part, the silk. If you look at fashion plates from the period, you will see a ton of pale pink bonnets in all seasons. I had a scrap left over from my 1903 corset that was the perfect shade of pink. I was able to cut out the two brim pieces that go here, and I still have to cut the crown piece and one for the top, uh, but I still need to cut the bias binding that will go around here, and I need at least two strips of this, and I still need the little ruffle that hangs in the back, a little bravolet, bravolet, and I do not have a lot of fabric to work with. I was very, very lucky that I had enough silk for all my pieces and I used a scrap for the top of the crown. I knew I wanted to do some kind of decorative end cap, so when I worked out the design that I liked, I layered it over the flannel. Not gonna lie, but this end cap here took me three times to get right, mostly because I didn't have enough seam allowances on the uh, little end cap piece, but at least it's done and it looks pretty good. So I just sewed binding on about half of the brim. Uh, and I thought I measured well enough, but turns out on the underside, I just don't have enough coverage to cover this stitching. So that means I have to take it out. And hopefully I can scrape out these holes so they don't look terrible. I really felt like this thing was the hat from hell at this point, but luckily we're over the hard part now and getting close to the end. The last bit is the curtain ruffle at the back neck. This netting was used to add body to the lightweight fashion fabric. I'm just hemming the side and bottom edges, then whip gathering the top and adding it to the back of the crown. Oh, and while I was sewing, I pricked my finger and got a spot of blood on the silk. Obviously, you don't want to rinse your silk hat in water, so I dipped a Q-tip in some hydrogen peroxide, and that took care of the stain. Now that the body is finished, it's on to the decorations. Most of the fashion plates I saw used ribbon that matched the bonnet. This was the closest pink color I could find. It's some vintage rayon satin ribbon from Etsy. After fiddling with the placement, I tacked everything down. I'm also adding some pink flowers. I guess they're cherry blossoms? And I had just enough ribbon left to make a little bow to go on the side. And lastly, I made a lining for the crown by sewing a tube from scrap cotton, gathering one end closed with a drawstring, and hand sewing it to the inside.
Um, I want to be honest with you, this hat has some issues. For one, it will just not stay on your head without a significant bun, which I don't have, or without a hat pin. And I do have hat pins, but they're either either very short or super long, and I need a kind of mid-range length for this. Also, while the outside layer is pretty smooth, the inside gets a little loosey-goosey, and I really wasn't sure how to fix that. It's a concave shape, so that's going to happen. I considered doing some spray adhesive to the flannel layer underneath, but um, my spray adhesive was a little old. I've also read that you can do some hand tacks along the inside here, but I just don't see how you don't see that, especially since so much of this is exposed. Oh, and I also think the wire that I chose, even that was not strong enough for what I need. I just really gotta bite the bullet and buy proper millinery wire instead of just trying to pick up anything I can find at the craft store. But otherwise, it's a pretty good hat. And I think I've learned that I like millinery and hat making and I wanna learn more about it. So if you know any good uh, books or suppliers for hat making, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I definitely want to check those out. Thank you for watching and liking and subscribing and until next time, happy sewing.